Hi everybody, my name is Rick and I've been on the editorial panel for the CIS Critical Security Controls for a number of years and was part of version 8. And this is the fourth in my series of talking about the version 8 critical security controls. Uh, you will get a link to number one through three in the description below, and as well as a link to the CIS critical security controls themselves, so you can you know download them and follow along at home. So control number four is about secure configuration of enterprise assets and software. Um, Control 4 is mostly a combination of version 7 controls number 5 and 11. And um, we had a, a long title description in version 7 describing the different assets that were part of configuration in, 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 in control number 5. It was hardware, software, mobile devices, laptops, workstations, servers, you know. And so in version 8, we just define what enterprise assets were, like I described in control number 1, you know, to mean all computing devices and including network devices which is why we included old control number 11 in control number four here today. Here's the definitions of enterprise assets, you know, because we wanted to make sure that it covered everything and, you know, that that was a computing or a network device. And so we have a, a number of different things that we consolidated in here. So let me bring up my little chart of showing the different movements we made in the controls real quick to show that control number four is a combination of, we can follow the orange line, we say control number five and control number 11. And as I'm going to talk about, we did a little bit of nine, which we deleted and a little bit of 15, which deleted. And so that's kind of how we got to control number four. Control, so control number four, and here's, you know, control four over here, is one that we added safeguards to. Now, of course, we're combining these two into this and a couple others, and so we added some more, but ironically, you'll see that a lot of these are kind of new because we, kind of, we wanted to add a new description to what we're kind of looking at. And so we probably, I mean, seriously, probably took more time on this one than, than most of the others because we are, for all intents and purposes, taking four controls and putting them into one because we wanted to make sure the configuration was something that was a focus because, I mean, it's control four. It's one of the top five, right? Um, and, and we spent weeks on this one. And I want to give a shout out to Paul Campbell, who really kind of led this effort in trying to consolidate this and, and putting into the creation of control number four. So let's look at the updates. We have the two over here. Remember, as we said, we call them safeguards now before we call them subcontrols. We reordered the safeguards to be aligned with the implementation group. So ironically, five was that way anyway in version seven. Um, we added 4.1, establish and maintain secure configuration process, uh, specifically for assets and software, because before we just said establish a configuration, but we need a process to, you know, create, test, update, manage, etc. over time. It's not a one-time thing. You can't just like, you know, create the configuration and be done with it. It's definitely a journey and, and not a destination. We added 4.2, establish and maintain secure configuration process for network infrastructure. Uh, this was inspired by, you know, control number 11. You know, network devices are often managed by uh, a different organization, uh, different, you know, there are different types of computing systems. They're often updated maybe less frequently, not the, you know, monthly patch Tuesday that, that Microsoft has. And, and frankly, sometimes they're kept at a certain stable version. So we didn't want to have two ask and a safeguard. So it was important we felt a separate process be developed for network assets. We added 4.3, configuration or automatic session locking for enterprise assets. Essentially, that's inactivity timeout. We moved um, 9.4, look, we had, this is the third one we've added in, new player entered the game, right? 9.4 over to 4.4 and 4.5 to implement and manage a firewall on servers and end user devices. This functionality is you know, often native to the operating system or you can install an application for that. We moved 11.5 to 4.6 to securely manage enterprise assets and software. Uh, specifically, this is about secure administration, uh, the, the configurations, not, uh, you know, not using a weak password or weak authentication mechanism or insecure you know, um, connection protocols. And I'll talk about more of that in the details. We added 4.7, manage default accounts on enterprise assets and software, meaning you know, remove or rename default accounts. We moved version 7 9.2 to 4.8, uninstall or disable unnecessary services on enterprise assets and software. And let me just talk a little about why we got rid of control number 9 from version 7. Basically, it was outdated. Ports and Protocols was almost 20-year-old U.S. Department of Defense approach to network defense. You know, 
and I'll give you a quick story. I was actually on a contract way back in the early 2000s for ports and protocols with DISA. We would come into the meeting with like five different ports that we would want to discuss, you know, say like 22 for SSH, 23 for Telnet, 25 for SMTP, 23 for DNS. And then we would do an overview of what these ports do and the protocols and what security threats and risks there are to them and how people implement them and, and what controls exist to configure and protect those. So then each of the four services, Air Force, Navy, Army, Coast Guard, were all there. And they would like discuss, you know, whether or not that they would want this, you know, you know, um, 22 for SSH, you know, open from an enclave to the external or from the, you know, internal to a DMZ or from a DMZ to an enclave and different things like that. It was it was very tedious to kind of go through each of these. We would probably go through like five a month and we do this once a month for like a year to get through. I mean, there's 65,535 protocols. I mean, obviously not that many have like specific things named to them, but it was very tedious and also got quite contentious with they were arguing about how it would be. So we would kind of moderate all of that and then we'd, we'd establish, you know, what the policy would be and then we would kind of put it to bed and then everyone would agree and we move on to the next one. <laughs> I actually was kind of part of the reason to get rid of control number nine. So, you know, if it was one of your favorites, you can blame me. <laughs> So we added 4.9, configure trusted DNS servers on enterprise assets. We added 4.10, enforce automatic uh, device lockout on portable and end-user devices, which means like laptops and mobile, which are kind of a rough thing for um, end-user portable devices. Added 4.11, enforce remote wipe capability on portable end-user devices. You know, before we only had it on, you know, just for, for wireless. And then we move 15.10, oh, we have another one, Kittering, <laughs> um, to 4.12, separate enterprise workspaces on mobile end-user devices. You know, essentially use a container on a mobile device. So let me go over why we got rid of control number 15. <laughs> um, in general, it was not really focused. You know, you can see in some of these things, I'll move this up a little bit. Um, you know, you, you can see that part of it's both Wi-Fi, some relate to mobile devices, you know, 15.1 and 2 are about access points, you know, 3 is about, you know, wireless intrusion detection, which is a very specific ask. Um, and there are many ways to achieve this now. Uh, um, and then, now, you know, 15.9, disable and limit access to devices uh, to or restrict peer-to-peer -peer or disable wireless peripherals or all basic configuration elements. In 15.7, you know, about using AES, again, too prescriptive, prescriptive. And then 15.8, you know, is covered in 4.6. And as I said, we kept 15.10 and moved it over here to uh, 4.12. So again, Getting rid of 15 was my idea. <laughs> so blame me if you miss it. But, you know, I didn't have absolute control. Let me you know, mention that, you know, this was a panel. <laughs> there were a dozen people plus an equal amount of CIS staff who met a couple times a month for eight months or so working on this. And I got voted out many times on things I thought we wanted to do, you know, add or remove. But, you know, I don't want you to infer that I like what controlled like some of these going away or what got added. It was a very, very collaborative effort and it was a great experience. And I think we we really see that in, in version eight, that we put a lot of time and dedication in making sure that it was very consistent. You know, we updated the language, we included glossaries, we make sure that all the wording was very consistent. And, and I think it's a really great document to, to work from, particularly going through the deep dive of what we were doing in Control.7. So now that I noted the changes, let's do a little deeper dive into some of these 12 safeguards. And I'll move over because it's another big one. I'll kind of slide the microphone over here a bit. Okay. So 4.1 and 4.2, you know, we start with development of a process for develop and maintain secure configurations. And we detail the scope of all the assets in the software, you know, a network infrastructure and to do it, you know, do the review at least annually, uh, because we also want to put not just one ask per, sub, per, per safeguard, but also a timeliness, you know, 4.3 to 4.5, 4.7 to 4.10 and 4.12 are all about configurations themselves, where 4.6 and 4.11 or more about securely managing these assets. 4.3, we describe the auto log off session, uh, auto log off for sessions to be, you know, 15 minutes of inactivity for systems and two minutes for mobile devices. 4.4 and 4.5, we recommend turning on and managing host based firewalls on servers and end user devices, which, like I said, could be native, could be third party tool. You know, there are lots of things that do that nowadays. 
uh, 4.6, securely manage access and assets and software. We're specifically talking about using secure connections like SSH or HTTPS and not insecure protocols like Telnet or HTTP. And again, this could be for managing a web server or managing a network device or even managing a server. In 4.7, we recommend disabling default accounts or if you can't remove them, rename them. If you can't rename them, then maybe put a 124 character password on them. You know, we just want to make sure that they're just not lingering out there, right? 4.8, uninstall or disable unnecessary services on assets and software. Um, but these might be, you know, so these might be web services or web shells or other file transfer, you know, listeners. Um, AirDrop, uh, AirDrop on a Mac is a good example of that. Um, uh, 4.9, configure trusted DNS servers. You know, we recommend using an enterprise, you know, managed DNS or a known trusted external provider because um, you don't want some untrusted DNS server sending you to a malicious website that isn't the one that you thought you were going to. 4.10 talks about device lockout after a number of failed attempts. We suggest no more than 20 on laptops and no more than 10 on mobile devices. Uh, 4.11, we suggest having remote wipe capability in case, it's off, in case the device is lost or stolen. This is on laptops or mobile devices. Uh, it's a pretty standard uh, capability these days. And then finally, 4.12 is specific to mobile devices where we recommend the use of the secure containers to separate the organizational data from the personal data. So now, Let's look up the upfront material or the narrative as we kind of refer to it. And so I will post that up over here. <laughs> so on page one, we talk about the overview. You know, we added establish and maintain and define a more define more clearly the scope. And, and we took out the why statement in version seven since it was kind of redundant. And I'll put that right here. You know, we added, you know, why it is. And in the why this control is critical, we kept much of the language of insecure default configurations. Um, you know, we go into the need to track configuration changes and enforce management of on-premise and remote devices and services. You know, we go into service provider management and that, you know, software as a service or platform or service might have similar default accounts that and settings that you may want to, to, um, to change because they might be insecure. Then we switch to page two and we talk about procedures and tools. We link to the CIS benchmarks and the NIST standards as a starting point, but you know you need to tailor these to your organization's policies and risk requirements. Uh, we walk through the steps to develop a secure configuration baseline image, and we finally give a link to the CIS configuration assessment tool for use when evaluating or managing secure configurations. So. That's control number four. <laughs> Hopefully it was helpful to go over the changes um, between seven and eight um, and a little backstory of how we got there and why we removed a couple of them, which again, it's my fault. Um, if you haven't already, please go download the controls yourself. The link is in the description. If you have any questions or comments, sign up for the controls workbench. The link is also in the description where you can post questions or suggestions to for the next version. You can contribute to that. Though, um, Feel free to leave a comment to me below. And with that, please like and subscribe and have a nice day. Hello, everybody. As I have no pets to share at the end, I do have these interesting art figures. This one is a dragon that was made out of automobile engine parts. Enjoy.